In this lesson, we'll cover a few more things about the V-Ray frame buffer. First, go over to your V-Ray asset editor, click on the settings tab, and you'll see here that interactive and progressive should both be flipped to the left here so that we're using bucket render mode. Also, we want the quality slider set to medium. And with all of those things in place, let's go ahead and click render. Once the render is finished, click on the history button here, and let's go ahead and save this image to the history. Right click on it and leave a comment, for example, the color. Then go ahead and close that down and collapse the history back in. Now let's change the color of the chair. So back over in the asset editor, click on the materials tab, and you'll notice the plastic translucent white. This was added from the library, and it's what we have here on the chair. Click on the quick settings for that material, and we'll change the color by adjusting the fog color here. So go ahead and click on that swatch, and then let's pick another color. For example, maybe something blue. Then I'll close that down. And so that we don't have to wait for the entire render again, let's go ahead and draw a region around just that part of the chair. And then go ahead and click to re-render. Once that render is finished, let's go back to the History tab again. And let's save this one as well, right-clicking again to add a comment here, and then saving that comment. I'll clear the region. And back over in the History, we can see the numbers that are assigned to each image here. So pressing 2 will switch me to the white chair, and 1 back to the blue chair. Also, with the blue chair rendering selected, I can click on A to set it to the A of the AB comparison, or you can also, for the white chair, right-click and set it that way. So I'll set that one to B. Over in the frame buffer, you can slide the slider back and forth to compare those two images. Note that this button here will swap the AB, so now the blue is on the right and the white is on the left. Okay, let's go ahead and click on this button here to clear the comparison, and then let's explore some of the color corrections down here. Let's come over and check on the exposure, and then click here to expand the options. Now let's say we want to fix where we're sort of burning out the image here with the light on the wall in the upper right hand corner. Well, of course, exposure, you could slide that down, and that might fix that, but the problem is you've darkened the entire image. So a better option, I'll set this back to zero, the default, a better option is the highlight burn, which will only focus on those highlights. Notice that it's just affecting that upper corner. So you could slide that back a bit just to get rid of some of the over brightness there. Now let's also check on the color balance and flip down the menu to see all of its options. Now the default is to have this check for all, but let's go ahead and check on the shadows only. And we can adjust just the shadows to be a different color temperature. Let's slide them a little bit to the bluer range. Then let's say we want to warm up the highlights or the light. So let's check on the highlights. And maybe we warm those up, sliding these sliders a little bit to the warmer values. Lastly, let's check on curve and click to flip down its options. And then I'll scroll down here. At the top right here, we have the ability to affect the bright areas of the image. And at the bottom left, we have the ability to affect the dark parts of the image. So what we do here is click once here and then come over to this little dot, click and drag it, and this will help us darken if we drag it towards the right here. It'll help us darken the image down in the dark areas. And then up here, we click on this box and then click and drag this to the upper left, and that will brighten the bright parts of the image. Of course, if we wanna lighten up some of the dark parts of the image, we could drag this a little bit in the opposite direction. Now, once you like the color corrections you've made, Scroll up to the top where it says Globals and go ahead and click on that button and you see the option for Save. Now you'll notice it says Files of Type and you have two different file types you can save as. You've got the Global Color Correction file. This is a V-Ray specific color correction file. And then you have an LUT file or .cube. This is a cross-platform file type. But for this example, we're gonna use the V-Ray specific Global Color Correction file type. And then let's go ahead and name this and then let's go ahead and save it in the Assets folder and click Save. Now let's say you had saved some other color correction files like that and you wanted to load them here. Click on the Globals button and pick the option for Load. And then in that same Assets folder, you see we have CC Chair 01. Go ahead and click on that and click Open. And notice you have a few settings that are applied automatically there. Let's go ahead and save that to the history. And then let's do it again. Click on Globals, click Load. And in that same assets folder, let's pick CC Chair 2, click open. Notice that's a different result. 
we'll go ahead and click save in the history. And one more time, click globals, click load. And in that same assets folder, we'll click CC chair three and click open. And we'll save that option as well. And now we have three new options here. And if we want to load them to preview different color corrections, we can right click on any of the options and click load color corrections. We'll see that particular style, or we can right click load color corrections. That'll change it to another. And we can right click and load color corrections to change it to that third option.